Hi, I'm Frank Massiosi, and I'm here today with uh, Jordan Glatt, th former mayor Jordan Glatt, um, and we have as our guest John Dockerty. Uh, welcome, John. Thank you. This is this is another in the series of uh, interviews of all the candidates running for uh, uh, for common council this year. Um, so let me kick it off with uh, um, a, a, a general question, um, John. Tell us what is it in your background that qualifies you for uh, for running for council? Well, I've been a volunteer in this town since I was a teenager. Everything from the Boy Scouts to participate in my church's activities, volunteering for different charities. Um, my 28 year career at the police department certainly qualifies me, gave me an insight that most people don't see. Um, I counted it up, in addition to those, I've served on over 25 voluntary boards, committees, or non-for-profits over the years. And you know, I've been on the first aid squad, I'm a life member. I've served as the night, Grand Knight of the Knights of Columbus just recently, and I did just did a three-year stint at uh, the planning board here in town. And it just comes back to the fact that I want to stay involved. I think I still have something to offer the town as a volunteer. And my next step was to become involved in politics, something I was unable to do when I was in the police department. You just can't hold two offices in the same municipality. So afterwards, um, I got involved with the Republican Party, and then knowing how I missed my engaging with the public, with the planning board, which was my last uh, major step, I said I want to tr run for council. Thank you. John, thanks for raising your hand and for to run. It's Thank you. a big commitment you're making. Um, so speaking of parties, uh, what's the difference? In Summit, we have partisan elections, as, as you know. Some communities do not. In Summit, what do you think the biggest difference is between the Republican and Democrat on the local level? You know, really, there isn't too much difference between the two parties because we're all Summit residents. We all basically want the same thing. We want to do good for the town. We want to have good schools. We want to have safe streets. <clears throat> we all want the same thing. It's just, I guess, the difference being is how we prioritize certain things. And it comes down to some cases how we spend money. So I guess some one party may think we spend money in this direction, and others would think to say, no, we're going to save money. We should spend it that way. But really, in the end, we all want the same thing. We want safety, security, and what's best for our children and our families. John, there's a lot of talk about uh, downtown retail. All the candidates have been talking about it. <coughs> I'm sure as you go door to door, you hear people uh, uh, asking about it. What, what would you do to improve downtown retail? Well, I know the uh, Common Council has input as to who goes on to the uh, SDI. I believe uh, it was proposed a while back that the SDI should be scaled down in size because the, s the amount of members is too cumbersome to get much done. Uh, the SDI primarily I see as the people responsible for recruiting stores to come into the downtown. Just, excuse me, just for the benefit of the viewers, SDI, Summit we, we all know, but mm -hmm. Summit Downtown. Summit Downtown Incorporated. Which manages the Special Improvement District. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. And. They're, t they're tasked with finding and recruiting stores to move into some of the vacancies that are going on now. I mean, there's like over 90 um, different store owners, property owners in the downtown. So there's 90 private property rights going on there. So you can't really tell 90 different people how they should recruit. We compete with like the uh, mall at Short Hills where it's just one entity that owns the whole store, the whole property. So they can dictate as to who they're going to be uh, trying to get in there. But in my opinion, it's hard because we can't get some of those big ticket stores because the, there's no uh, competition clauses with the, uh, the mall, which is so close. And I think that's a problem. But you look at uh, Short Hills, Milburn area, they have a thriving downtown. And they're certainly closer to the mall than we are. I think we have to do is find a way to recruit uh, stores that are unique that aren't found in the malls that are of interest to people, something you can't just buy online. And we just, you know, I don't know if there's any concessions we can give for taxes because your taxes are based on your assessed values, so you really can't offer incentives in New Jersey anyway. I'm sure that's different in other states. 
but I guess it just comes down to finding the right people on S SDI Summit Downtown Incorporated so that they can uh, actively recruit and find the stores that will fill the vacancies. I have seen that some of the vacancies that we were complaining about years ago, like the Bagel Chateau is now fully um, functioning as a uh, retail sales on the f first floor and I believe there's uh, office space upstairs. Summit Medical Group has finally, you know, been redone, so that was a problem because we saw skeleton type buildings on the gateways more or less to our, summit, our central retail business district. And uh, finally the old uh, movie house is now a thriving uh, furniture store. So we, I don't see, we're, think we're seeing as many of the vacancies as we once had, but we have to keep the momentum going. Thank you. Uh, John, one of the big issues in town is whether to have all day kindergarten or not. What is your thinking on that? I don't know, Jordan, whether or not all day kindergarten makes a difference in preparing a child for college. I'll be honest with you, I don't. I'm not a uh, educator, I don't have that, but what I am is I am a father of four sons who went through our school system. And I can tell you right now, having just sent my last one off to college, I know what we had to do to prepare him for the best education he can. There's three things I think that you know I've spent money on and a lot of other parents have to get their children that much closer to the better school is SAT or uh, ACT or SAT prep I spent fortune as much as other parents have to prepare the child to take that test it's just a test it's just a number mm -hmm. but it's a number that matters so I would see that as more important than all day kindergarten I see also the sports programs you can see just the list of people who've gotten into division one and Ivy League uh, schools based on their sports abilities. So I would keep our programs and the sports strong like they are. And quite frankly, um, I just don't know the last time someone asked me to provide my son's scores in kindergarten, or for that matter, the first, you know, first through sixth grade. They based it solely on what their performance was at the high school level. So I would also spend money on more AP courses. Because AP courses, it seems AP courses, the more you have, the more you're able to successfully pass the exam in the end, whether you get a three, four, or five, that's, uh, that's, that's value for getting into college. Um, as far as all day kindergarten, if it's going to cost the taxpayers more money, I would say no now. I'm an open minded guy. If you could show me data later on that it does make a difference or not being able to compete with other towns, then yes. But right now, there's not enough data for me to say, yes, let's spend the money and burden the taxpayers more. I'd rather put it on where I know it makes a difference. SAT, ACT prep, sports, and more AP classes. John, speaking of taxes, um, used to be that the tax burden was split roughly 50% for the schools, which is about the same today, and then the remaining half was half city, half county. Now it's shifted so that it's 29, 30% county, something like that, and 20 to 21% city because the city's held the line and the county hasn't. So this is, this is a problem that needs to be dealt with. What should we do about Union County taxes? Well, we're kind of at their beck and call. We're like a cash cow with the county. I mean, I know people on council have gone down repeatedly to the freeholder meetings and uh, pushed our cause to, to hold the line. You know, we're, we're holding it at the 2% cap. For the, In fact, this last year, we, even lower than the 2% cap. So we're doing our best locally to hold down costs and taxes. But it's just, you know, they're, they're out of control sometimes. And, and I don't know, personally, I'm just not gonna sit here and make up a, a re, a, what we could do to keep the county but my idea is maybe what we can control is the expenses here in town. I mean, I'll, there's over 500 municipalities in New Jersey, and each one of them pretty much do it all the same. Each one has their own fire department, police department, emergency services, road department, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, Summit took the initiative and it started its own um, combined dispatch where we're sharing the dispatch and sharing the cost of New Providence and the uh, Milburn Fire Department. There's other opportunities I think we can do more in that regard. As I said, I don't know how much we're gonna be able to do with the county, but we can probably bring down costs locally. We can share other things. And I'm not saying, you know, 
merge the entire police department with another police department. I don't know that we're ever going to be ready for that just yet. Maybe someday, but not now. But there's smaller things we could do. Do we need to have two, uh, a separate municipal court? As it is, we share judges. Why can't we have one municipal court that sits maybe twice a week as opposed to once a week in each town? And the, st and the ancillary staff that comes with it with the Violations Bureau. Um, records department. We're all required to have a records department or at least follow the same um, GRC, the, um, the uh, public records uh, laws. And we all have to respond in a certain amount of time when people request records. And uh, we have to give it to the people in the format they want. So it's not like it's a different way of doing it. It's just a different uh, database. Why can't we merge something like that? Small things that, you know, I think we could do better trying to control costs under stuff that we do control locally. The county, I don't have any answers for that. And I don't, if, if we did, we wouldn't have this as a question. We'd be doing it right now. Thank you. John, there's been a lot of talk about sanctuary cities uh, on the national news. And Summit has a bit over 13% of its population is Hispanic. What would you say to those residents who may be undocumented? Here's my take on this. If the federal government had done their job in securing the borders and being a little more proactive as to who was coming in here and staying, we wouldn't have this problem. But how do we penalize people who have now been here for years? They're not documented, but they're raising their families that have had children. How do you separate people and send people back, deport them? I don't believe it. If you're breaking the law and you're hurting people, I have no problem with deporting. But as far as Sanctuary City, Jordan, I don't want to risk losing federal aid. I mean, you, you know, other towns, the larger cities have mentioned that they're going to be Sanctuary Cities. They're putting their constituents in a position where they could lose federal aid because the federal government has said they may take it back. And then what are you going to do, go to the state and ask them to make up the difference? Either way, someone's going to pay. I think there should be a road to citizenship as long as there's a proper vetting process to you know realize the people who are here here undocumented but are here not to do harm um, that's my take on this I would not support making our city sanctuary city because I don't want to risk losing aid but I told you Thank my you. feelings on people who are here I think there should be a road to citizenship right. I don't know right. how it's not right. my venue but <laughs> right so, um, John, there's lots of talk about redevelopment um, in the downtown. Uh, do you think there's areas that uh, need redevelopment, and well, how would you address that? Well, while I was on the planning board, the council asked the planning board to look into, I believe they referred to it as the Broad Street uh, Triangle, the area where the, tr um, the post office, the firehouse, the senior citizen, the lots behind it. Mm -hmm. That was an area that we were looked, we were asked to look at to see if it is a, a possibility. Um, and there were some positive things that came out of those conversations, but it really hinged on whether or not the, the federal government, the post office, is willing to relinquish control of that central piece of property. I mean, we looked at it without using it, and it didn't seem like it was uh, there was much. Uh, profit in it for someone to try and say build a garage on just a small lot behind the uh, post office you really would need more of the frontal um, that fronts onto Maple Street which is the building itself um, the other option is what do we do with the firehouse I mean I think we don't need another study to tell us they need a new firehouse the question is does it need to be there I mean I I'm not a fireman but I imagine they'd want to be central there was other places looked at to move that possibly down into the undeveloped section of the Broad Street parking lot, which still leaves them on Broad Street. So I think that is the area we still need to push forward and see if we can't get the, uh, the post office to make a decision as to whether or not they can relinquish that property and sell it back to the city and we could probably go forward with a developer there because we do need more parking. Given the hours that they're open, they ought to just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you feel are the biggest things that need to be fixed in Summit? Well, Jordan, I've been a cop here for 28 years, resident born and raised, 
and I've been walking the, pro walking the neighborhoods like any prospective uh, politician would do, and I, I, that's the questions I, after I introduce myself and let them know why I'm running, I ask them, what is the, uh, the concerns you have? And number one that seems to be is uh, safety, uh, traffic safety, pedestrian safety. Uh, they're complaining about the speeders, they're complaining about people who are distracted drivers who are on the phone, they're doing their hair, they're eating, mm -hmm. they're doing everything what they're supposed to be doing, but paying attention on the roadway. That's their biggest concern. And then, and then second is taxes. I mean, if you look around, you, you see people, they stick around here and they pay the high taxes, they put their kids through our excellent education system. As soon as their youngest is uh, off to college, they put the for sale sign in front of their house because they don't want to pay those higher taxes. They're willing to put up with it while their kids are in school. So we got to find a way to hold down expenses. I already said I don't know how we're going to do that with the county, but we can always do it locally with how we spend money. And the, the current council has done a very good job of keeping expenses down and keeping well down below the 2% cap. I mean, you look at um, people who are retired and they're on a fixed, truly a fixed income, their biggest concern, how am I going to afford these taxes? Uh, you know, maybe I can downsize to something a little bit smaller and I could be able to hang in there. But so many more are just saying, I, I've got to go where I can stretch my dollars. I think so. T two things I find is the taxes and traffic safety. So, John, I've got to cut, cut in here. I know you could talk about public safety all afternoon, but we've got two minutes for uh, a wrap-up. Okay. My name is John Doherty, and I am running for council in Ward 1 this year. I'm in a unique situation where I've probably had the best civics lesson of any person who's uh, hoping to become an elected official in this town. I've been a public servant in this town for 28 years. I've seen the citizens, their best, their lowest, and I've learned the one important lesson, empathy. So I know what people go through in this town. It doesn't matter where you live in this town. So I think more than anything else, if you learn empathy as a politician, you're, you've learned a very important lesson. Most important also is the voters have had a 28-year chance to look me over to see whether or not I'm that guy. I've tried to hold myself up with a, my reputation as an honest. I have uh, had the authority of my office as a ca police captain. And I've tried to exercise it with uh, concise, consistent, and fairness. So if anything else, you've had a chance to do test drive me for 28 years, and I'm hoping this point you've trusted me for 28 years with the safety and security of your family your property and your homes I'm now asking for that same solemn trust this time as an elected official the city of summit thank you very much and I hope to have your vote in November